welcome back to the channel today we're here back for another video here on the channel and today i'm going to be talking about gta online's biggest update but i'm also going to be talking about the biggest disappointment and that is also with this update so i'm going to explain what i mean by that uh here in this video today but yeah we're pretty much going to be talking about the kyle perico update and my full thoughts my opinions um what you need to do with the heist all of the cool little interesting features that come with this update as well um, we're going to be discussing all of that today and it should be pretty interesting hope you guys do enjoy and let's get started all right rockstar has finally released a brand new update the Cayo perico heist and it released on tuesday december 15th 2020 i played it um i i played the heist i have some thoughts and opinions and we're going to go over that um here right now so uh, I think we should start off with how you get started with the heist. So added a brand new club to the game, um, at, actually right under the casino, and it's called the Music Locker. And it's pretty much just a replacement uh, nightclub, or it's just pretty much a replacement for our nightclubs and another social space for people to hang out and interact with each other. But I can't see a whole lot of people um, going there. I mean. I, I feel like it'd be empty, uh, but I could be wrong. Maybe just just for fun, maybe just for laughs. But I don't think it would be um, anything groundbreaking. Um, I mean, unless they change up the DJ every week, then I could see how uh, I could see how pe more people would be interested in going to it. But anyways, uh, once you head over to the music locker, you have to meet with Mont with Martin Madrazo's son, Miguel Madrazo. And uh, that's pretty much how you get started with the heist. You meet up with him, you discuss breaking into the island and getting some files. So that is how uh, that gets started. Then you do have to buy a submarine. Now, here's, here's the interesting thing. We all thought this submarine was gonna be super expensive, out of this world, overpriced. It's only $2.2 million. That actually isn't bad. Now I know that might sound be like, I know some people are gonna be like, Chief, 2.2 million dollars how can you say that is not bad well considering how much vehicles are these days in gta online that doesn't sound that bad 2.2 million dollars for a base submarine without any options um i believe on mine i just changed the color added a flag and that's really about it i i didn't really buy anything else um i mean i later on i bought the sparrow it kind of doesn't make sense to me why we can't have the sea sparrow in the submarine but we can have the regular sparrow in the sub now i would i would think it would make sense to have the sea sparrow so you can land on the water uh you know right by your submarine and you know easy ask easy access and whatnot instead of having the regular sparrow where you can only put it on land and yeah I, I, I don't understand, but at least you can put weapons on it. It's pretty nice. Um, so there's that, I guess. Yeah, so we have the regular Sparrow in the game, and then you can also buy it like a submersible uh, submarine. So that's actually pretty nice. You can also store another vehicle in the submarine, the Pegasi Terrader, which is pretty much the Stromberg Mark II. Upgraded, it actually has nitrous, I believe, and it has some other little cool features as well have the submarine once you get it uh you can start the heist from there um and the first mission is pretty much the is pretty much scoping out the island um so it's uh um, i was actually kind of surprised that um they actually did this but they added dr dre and gave him a little appearance in the game so um that was actually pretty interesting to meet it to see it to see his uh, appearance at the airport uh, arrived at the airport you're flown off to Cayo Perico um, and here's kind of where the disappointment starts to roll in because you can't explore the island as much as you would think you're pretty much locked uh, to the scoping mission that's how you that's the only way you can actually explore this island um, is scoping <laughs> um, is is using the scoping mission from the heist I, I was expecting a little bit more uh, but yeah pretty much in the scoping part you you're having to duck from guards and you know kind of you know stay all stealthy and whatnot uh, which is don't get me wrong pretty interesting but at the same time um, I wish 
you know, you can have a little bit more freedom. Um, it is, I will say it is a pretty annoying getting ca caught by the guards and whatnot and um, having to go back to the gate and keep walking around and uh, whatnot to get through it. Um, and once you find a, a good strategy to, like once you get in the groove and once you find a good strategy, you'll be fine. Like So you're exploring four different types of things you can do and obviously the main piece of this um, heist is the files, the files you're trying to get. And once you get them, once you, you know, locate them, you can also locate some other things like cash and gold um, and other things around the island that you can pick up while you're doing the heist. And I'll explain that here in a little bit uh, once we actually start talking about the actual heist part. But uh, yeah, pretty much uh, you're scoping out. Uh, you can drive vehicles on the island, which is pretty, pretty good i guess um i know there's one unreleased vehicle that you can drive it's the um the mammoth squatty and which is based off a hummer a military hummer h1 um, so pretty cool um that vehicle should be coming later on um throughout the coming weeks and months of gta online once you scope it out um you can, again again you can look for other items to uh grab once it is time to do the heist um, but other than that, you just go back to Los Santos, and that's it. <laughs> um, that, that's really about it. You can go back to Los Santos. You just go back to Los Santos, keep rolling through the heist prep. So, yeah, I would say the heist prep is very similar to what you saw in the Diamond Casino heist, uh, where you have a lot of different selection of things you can do. Um, obviously, you can pick different approaches. Um, yeah, you can pick different vehicles as well, pick different approach vehicles. I know there's like two boats, um, a helicopter, or not a helicopter, two boats. Um, I know there's like two boats, some planes, and I think that's about it. Yeah, you just pick your, so you pick your approach vehicle, but then you also pick your weapon selection. And um, yeah, well, other than that, you just pretty much go through the preps. It is like the Diamond Casino where you can take out the guards, so you can actually make it. Um, easier for whenever you actually do the heist uh, which is pretty nice though I will admit I will admit that um, that is a pretty nice feature uh, pretty nice uh, little thing they added um, yeah you're not taking out you're not taking out like 10,000 guards like every every five minutes um, it, it makes it a lot simpler so yeah you just go through the heist prep and uh, once you're done with the heist prep, you are ready. You can be ready to do um, the heist. You have to complete the mandatory heist prep, not the optional stuff, but the mandatory heist prep. Um, and once you're done with that, you're pretty much good to go. And uh, you can start the heist. So uh, with this, you can do it by yourself. And I actually, as you can see in the video, I did choose to do it by myself here, but you can choose to have other people if you would like to. Um, I might do that next time because I feel like with this heist, it's a big challenge. It would be um, easier to do that. And plus, again, I'll explain why. I'll explain why here in a little bit. But yeah, once you're ready to do the heist, you just start. And um, yeah, you just head over with your approach vehicle. I picked the long fin boat. So that was a brand new boat here in the game, actually. As you guys will see, I'm, I'm riding in on that. And uh, once you are there you just kind of start going in so um you can also pick between whether you want to do it at day or night so i actually picked the day um but again you can pick night that might be easier for you all um actually might be easier if you're trying to do like a stealth approach uh, to this heist you don't want to uh, attract a bunch of attention to yourself you can do it at night uh, but in the daytime obviously the guards are going to see you a lot more and um it's it, it's gonna be harder uh, to stay stealth in the daytime, but um, you can do it either one, which is actually which is a uh, quite interesting the fact that they let you do that. But anyways, uh, once you are there, you kind of have to head over to the compound, and once you do that, uh, you just start kind of making your way through the guards. Um, this kind of this part kind of took me a little bit, I will say. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you the cut version of my heist attempts. Um, 
instead of the uncut version. I feel like that would take way too long uh, for me to explain that, but uh, pretty much you just make your way through the guards and uh, keep rolling through. And you do see that you can actually pick up two things. So you can actually pick up keys and key cards uh, from the guards. So once you keep taking out the guards, you can have the have uh, they'll probably once you keep taking out guards, they'll drop some stuff. They'll drop the keys and the key cards. So the keys are very important because that what gets you to the gates and gets you to unlock the gates and whatnot. The key cards are what gets you to unlock the doors for the gold, the cash, and even the paintings. If you if you are able to get one more person along with you, you can actually get that. You can actually get the gold, the cash, the paintings, and whatnot. But if you're not, well, uh, then you just have to leave that behind, unfortunately. Um, I kind of don't like the way they did that. Um, I kind of think that if you're doing it by yourself, you should be able to have full full reign at like whatever you can do. Like if 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 I see a key card, I should be able to unlock the door. Um, I, again, I don't like the way they did that, and I feel like they should change that for sure. Because like the whole point of doing a solo is by yourself, and you should be able, you should be able to get everything in the heist, you know, not be prompted to be like, okay, you have to do it with two people, you know, I, I feel like that doesn't make any sense, in my opinion, but I could be wrong, let me know in the comments what you all think on that, but anyways, once you get the keys though, uh, you do unlock the gates, and then you do have to uh, go through, go to the basement area over there, you do have to do a little bit of hacking, once you do that, then you get to the safe, and yeah, once you get to the safe, you pretty much have to enter a combination now um, don't worry don't panic um, you do get a text that uh, does let you know the combination of this of the safe so that is pretty nice that you, you're not really like obligated to like guess and find out which one could you imagine if you had to do that oh my god that would be so annoying um, I, I don't think people would want to play this heist anymore but um, anyways, it is pretty nice, and I, I think it would be it would just make sense. It just makes sense um, to just have a text for the uh, save com save combination. Yeah, but once you get the files, though, um, you pretty much make your exit, make your escape, and then you are given one objective once you leave the gate, and that is ex escape Cayo Perico. And uh, pretty much, you just you you either have the option to escape or just collect some of the other things that you find lying around for this video i did go ahead and grab some other things that i did see lying around but honestly if you have if you did not do one of the prep missions where uh, you take out the buzzards and you have like so many buzzards around you i would suggest just leaving um i, I would just say it's okay just just leave <laughs> yeah once you do that you just kind of leave you just kind of make your exit you can either take a plane or a boat i took a boat and uh yeah that you just head back to los santos that, that's it um i mean i know it sounds easier said than done but man it is um it was an interesting heist for sure but then you just hand off the uh files to miguel and uh that is it that is really it for this heist um, obviously I get the hunt obviously if you do it by yourself you get 100% of the cut which is a pretty nice thing to look forward to overall pretty good heist I guess um, I think I'm glad that uh, you are able to do it by yourself and you're actually able to pick some of them some more details to it you can actually pick whether you want to do it at day or night time so it's actually pretty nice um, for you like it's actually a pretty nice thing to be able to do here I'm so glad they added I'm so glad they did it this way. But obviously, there are some things that I wish they changed. And obviously, number one is the way they did this island. Um, I to me, it looks like there's no like there's no way to customize our vehicles over there. There's no housing over there. Um, there's no houses that we can buy over there. It looks like. So I'm kind of disappointed. Um, but. At the same time, I think we can still. I think we should still be able to explore the island 
as is. Like, we should be able to drive around. We should be able to have, um, it should be pretty much a sandbox, kind of sandbox type drive around and mess around with other players um the thing is once you're actually done with the heist you can actually go back to the beach party area and you can have fun you can have fun over there if you would like um but that's it that's as far as you can go in Cayo Perico uh, once you're done with the heist it's not very it what well, it's not as um detailed as I thought it would be the fact that Rockstar spent like hours and hours and hours trying to perfect this island so we can play a heist on it and the fact they lock it to a heist pretty much that we can only go back to a beach park or a certain area um, I feel like kind of doesn't make sense to me but again um, it is what it is all right so that is pretty much my thoughts on the heist um, at the end of the day they said that this was going to be the biggest update for GTA Online. I disagree. I don't feel that this is the biggest GTA Online update that we received. Um, just because of the way things are, the, th the way that things work. Um, don't get me wrong, I do like it. I still am going to play GTA. Um, I still have many, many videos to many, many videos to make here on this game. but. Uh, it just doesn't feel like the biggest update, but I could be wrong. Rockstar may have something up their sleeve that they're trying to hide from us, and we'll find out sooner or later. Um, am I disappointed with this update? Not necessarily. Um, I think that they've added some pretty good stuff. Um, the submarine was a pretty good success, in my opinion. The fact that you can actually drive it. Um, yes, I did say that. You can drive it. I guess I am saying that. Do not hear me wrong. It is a drivable submarine, so uh, you can actually drive it to locations, you can drive it to places and stuff like that. It's really pretty interesting the fact that you can do that. Like not many, um, not many of the properties and things that you can buy in this update have that much functionality. Uh, so Rockstar did a pretty great job on that. 2.2 million dollars for a drivable submarine. They could have charged way more, and the fact that they put it on sale for 2.2 that's pretty good I would definitely jump on that um, but obviously if you if your wallet can't handle that wait for a discount of course um, that's most important but um, yeah I, I don't feel this is the biggest update we received um, but the submarine was pretty good success um, there are some other things that you can do with this update as well. It's not just the height and it's not just the island either. There's also some, uh, there's also a brand, two brand new radio stations in the game. So we have uh, Colt FM and then we also have Still Slippin' Los Santos, uh, which is actually pretty interesting, which actually has a pretty interesting backstory because you do have to go around and find uh, 10 uh, radio signal antennas and turn them turn all of them on so that you can actually broadcast the radio station it's actually only available in mirror park in the mirror park area but once you turn on those radio antennas i'm sure they'll be available um, to you i haven't actually done all of them yet but I actually get to drive a pretty interesting vehicle the garati itali rsx which is based off the ferrari sf90 stradale so uh, pretty interesting pretty interesting right there that vehicle should be arriving, um, I believe, sometime in the next couple of weeks and months. Uh, but that is going to be an interesting vehicle when that does drop, though. I cannot wait for that vehicle. Um, yeah, uh, GTA on this update has been very, very interesting for sure. Uh, let me know in the comments what you all think. And yeah, I mean. Again, I don't feel like this is the biggest update we received, but they did say it is. So maybe there's something coming along. I could be wrong. Who knows? But um, yeah, that is. Those are my thoughts on the Kaya Perico um, heist update. So yeah, um, I hope you guys did find this video informative, and I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys did and you'd like to see more, make sure to drop a like on this video. If you want to forget to subscribe for more videos like this and with that
Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.